Well, here's a story that's not getting a lot of attention. So many are not getting any attention, even though this story has the potential to transform life on Earth forever, forever, forever. It is a disturbing story how a Google employee concluded that Lambda, the most powerful artificial intelligence created by Google, had become sentient. After that, Google fired Blake Lemowine after he revealed his findings. Today we're going to discuss Joe Rogan and Mars Andreessen's opinion on this story. Let me know in the comments, do you think artificial intelligence can be sentient? This Google engineer that has come out and said that he believes that the Google AI is sentient because it says that it is sad, it says it's lonely, it starts communicating, and you know, Google is, there. it seems like they're in a dilemma in that situation. First of all, if it is sentient, does it get rights? Right. Like, does it get days off? Yep. It, 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 I had this conversation with my friend Duncan Trussell last night, and he was saying, imagine if you, you know, if you have to give it rights. Mm -hmm. Like, is it, does it get treated like a human being? Like, what is it? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give you, I'll make it even a step harder. What if you copy it? Right. Now you've got two of them. <laughs> well, that was what I said to Ray Kurzweil. Ray Kurzweil was talking at one point in time about downloading consciousness right. into computers, and then he believes that inevitably will happen. Right. And my thought was like, well, what's going to stop someone from downloading themselves a thousand times? Yeah, of course. Right. With well, some Donald Trump type character just wants a million Trumps out there, just yeah. out there doing speeches. Yeah. Like, what what would stop that? Yeah, exactly. So so let's let's start with what this actually is today, which is I, I think you know, which is very interesting, not well understood, but very interesting. So what what Google and this, this other company, OpenAI, that are are doing these kind of text the text bots that have the you know the the, the been, been in the news. What they do, it's a, it's a, it's a program. It's an it's an AI program. It, it's it's basically it uses a form of math called linear algebra. It's a very well known form of math, but it uses a very complex version of it. And then basically, what they do is they've got complex math running on big computers, and then what they do is they have what they call training data. And so what they do is they basically slurp in a huge data set from somewhere in the world, and then they basically train the math against against the data to try to kind of get it up to speed on how to interact and and do things. The training data that they're using for these systems is all text on the internet, right? So, and, and all text on the internet increasingly is a record of all human communication, right? That's all the text on the internet. All the text on the internet. So, how does it capture all this stuff? Well, that, so Google Google's core business is to be the is to do that is to be the crawler. You know, famously their mission: organize the world's information. They they actually pull in all the text on the internet already to make their search engine work, and then that's that's. And, and then, then you, the AI just scans that. And the AI basically uses that as a training set, right? Um, and so and, and, and basically just just basically choose through and processes it. It's a very complex process, but like choose through and processes it, and then the AI kind of gets a converged kind of view of like, okay, this is human language. This is what these people are talking about, you know, and then it has all this statistical, you know, when, when a human being says X, somebody else says Y or Z, or this would be a, a good thing to say or bad thing to say. For, for example, you can get emotion, you can, you can detect emotional loading from text now. So you can kind of determine with the computer, you can kind of say this text reflects somebody who's happy because they're saying, oh, you know, I'm having a great day versus this text is like, I'm super mad, you know, therefore it's upset. And so you could have the computer could get trained on, okay, if I say this thing, it's likely to make humans happy. If I this, say this thing is likely to make humans sad, but here's the thing: it, it, it's all it's all human generated text. It's it's all the conversations that, that that we've all had, and and so basically you load that into the computer, and then the computer is able to kind of simulate right somebody else ha having that conversation. Um, but but what happens is basically the computer is playing back what people say, right? It, it, right. It's not. It's not. Nobody. N no engineer. The, the, the guy who went through this and did the the, the whistleblower thing. He, he even said he didn't look at the code. He's not. He's not in there like working on the code. Everybody who works in the code will tell you it's not alive. It's not conscious. It's not having original ideas. What it's doing is it's playing back to you things that it thinks that you want to hear based on all the things that everybody has already said to each other that, mm. that, that, it, that it can get online. And in fact, there's all these ways you can kind of trick it into basic. Like, for example, you can have it. Pr he has this example where he like has it where basically he said, you know, I want you to prove that you're alive. And then the computer did all this stuff through it's alive. You can do the reverse. You can say, I want you to prove that you're not alive. And the computer will happily prove that it's not alive. Mm. And it'll give you all these arguments as to why it's not actually alive. And of course, it's because it the computer has no view on whether it's alive or not but it seems like in in with with the, this is all very weird yes. and for sure we're in the fog of life if it's not life 
It's in this weird fog of like what makes a person a person like what makes an intelligent thinking human being that knows how to communicate able to respond and answer questions. Well, it does it through cultural context, it does it through understanding language and having been around enough people that have communicated in a certain way that it emulates that. Yeah. So this is the real question. So th this is where I was headed. The, the, the real question is, what does it mean for a person to think? Right. Like that's the real question. And so and so let's talk about. There's something called the Turing test, right? Which yeah. is a little bit more famous now because the, the movie they Alan made about, made about yeah. Alan Turing. So the Turing test, basically, in its simplified form, the Turing test is basically you're sitting in a computer terminal, you're typing in questions, and then the answers are showing up in the screen. There's a 50% chance you're talking to a person sitting in another room who's typing the responses back. There's a 50% chance you're talking to a machine. You don't know, right? You're, you're the subject. And you can ask the entity on the other end of the connection any number of questions, right? He, will, he or she or it will give you any number of answers. At the end, you have to make the judgment as to whether you're talking to a person or talking to a machine. The, the theory of the Turing test is when a computer can convince a person that it's a person, then it will have achieved artificial intelligence, right? Th then it will be as, as smart as a person. But, but that begs the question of like, okay, like how easy are we to trick? Right. Right. Like, and, and in yeah. fact, and, and, so, and so actually it turns out what's happened, this is actually true. What's happened is actually there have been chat bots that have been fooling people in the Turing test now for several years. Mm. The easiest way to do it is with a sex chat bot. Because <laughs> they're the most gullible when it Specific, comes to sex. Specifically to men. Of course. <laughs> of I course. bet women are like way less gullible. Women probably fall for it a lot less. But men, like you get a man on there with a sex chat bot, like it, yeah. the man will convince himself he's talking to a real woman like pretty easily even when he's not. Right. Um, and so just think of this as a slightly more, you know, you could think about this as a somewhat more advanced version of that, which is, look, if, if this thing, if it's an algorithm that's been optimized to trick people, basically, to convince people that it's real, it's going to, it's going to pass the Turing test, even though it's not actually conscious, it, meaning it has no awareness, it has no desire, it has right. no regret, it has no fear, you know, it has none of the hallmarks that we would associate with being a living being, like much, much less a, a, a conscious being. And so, so this is this is the twist, and this is where I think this guy Google got 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 kind of strung up a little bit, is, or held up, um, is it, it, the the computers are going to be able to trick people into thinking they're conscious, like way before mm. they actually become conscious. And, and then there's just the other side of it, which is like we we have no idea, we don't know how human consciousness works. Like we we have no idea how the brain works. We have no idea how to like we, we have no idea how to do any of this any any of the stuff on people. The the most advanced form of medical science that understands consciousness is actually anesthesiology because they know how to turn it off <laughs> right they know how to they click you know yeah. power off and then you have to power back on which is also very important but right. like they have no idea what's happening inside the black box and and we have no idea no, nobody has any idea so so this is a parallel line of technological development that's not actually recreating the human brain it's doing something different it's basically training computers on how to understand process and then reflect back the real world it's very valuable work because it's going to make computers a lot more useful. For example, self-driving cars. This is the same kind of work that makes a self-driving car work. Yeah. Right? So this is, this is very valuable work. It will create these programs that will be able to trick people very effectively. Right. And so, so there, for example, here's what I would be worried about, which is basically like what percentage of people that we follow on Twitter are even real people? Right. What yeah. Well, Elon is trying to get to the bottom of that right now. He's trying to get to the bottom of that, you know, specifically on, on that on that issue from the business. But just just also think more generally, which is like, okay, if you have a computer that's really good at writing tweets, if you have a computer that's really good at writing angry political tweets or writing whatever absurdist you know humor or whatever it is, like, and by the way, maybe the computer is going to be better at doing that than a lot of people are. You know, you could you could imagine a future internet in which most of the interesting content is actually getting created by machines. Boing, boing, boing.